No. It shouldn't be. If you do it every minute, then, you know, I mean, there's like a million stupid Mark Twain type quotes about if you would never lie, you always don't have to remember anything. If you if yeah, you always yeah, tell yeah. the truth, you never have to remember anything. Mm. Yeah, when you start lying, it's oh, let, shit. you just start let, creating a. Let me grab this. Bad li- I'm a bad liar. There's a lot of people in marriages who are like, I shouldn't be in this, but how long could I possibly live? You know, <laughs> <laughs> just resigning like, is- themselves to death. <laughs> yeah. Let just- me grab this call. I don't want to lose this guy. He's miserable. Maybe we can help him out. Jim in Staten Island. Jim. Oh, this is Jimmy Greco. Listen to number three from a very long time ago. Oh, right on, Jimmy Greco. I re- I remember you. Yeah, what's up, boys? I'm in a miserable marriage with a miserable fat cunt that the only thing she does is, the only interaction she has with me is, what's your check look like? Okay? Uh, I fucking, the minute I turn around and I go to go stand up for myself, I just have a substance problem. So right away, are you using, it's just a miserable fucking existence. I would fucking leave, but I have a beautiful four-year-old son. And I don't want to leave this boy with this sick fucking cunt. Okay, and look, I jerk off more now than I ever did before. This morning, as I'm getting ready to work, I said, let me troll X and that sex. And let me look for something to beat the fuck off to. Okay? <laughs> beat the fuck off to. Well, listen to this poor guy. <laughs> I know. He's just miserable. Uh, also, how is your check, and are you drinking? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to know. I haven't had, I haven't had a drink or a drug in fucking 109 days. And I said, now I want to go. Wow, 109 days. days. When you're saying I thought you were going to say 109 days, you you better go to a meeting. Yeah, you're not meeting now. You're not going to make 115, (laughs) sir. Hey, uh, it also says she beats you. Is that true? Oh, she's taking a couple of swings at me here and there. I don't want to put it through a fucking wall. Did you ever hit her? No, no. I I, I did a a call out to her once. She fucking ran into the bathroom, and I fucking popped open the door. And, and then she sunk down to the ground, cowering, and I said, don't you have a fucking raise your fucking hands to me again, okay? Why? But, uh, all right, wow. listen, listen, that's so your... Miserable. That's that your, was like a treat. And Jim, I thought this four-year-old is having a ball or something. Oh, <laughs> these, God. People, these people sound <laughs> awesome. He was at home when this shit happened. Now, Jim, that's... All right, uh, listen, I want to jump in. That, that's your side of the story, and I, I believe every word of it. Mm. Now, and why would she stay in this thing then, Lou? Well, I don't know. I don't know why. Some people, there's always one like person. she obviously is miserable, too. There's always one person in a bad relationship who's perfectly happy to be in a bad relationship. There's always one person yeah. who's like, uh, who's fine with it, who's fine with just constant shitty. Yeah. The only thing I would say to you, sir, is that you're not going to lose your kid if you lo- if you leave this woman. You get, you get to keep the kid. Right. But you want to know what, though? I don't want him to have that in the back of his mind. You know, uh, you're a coward. <clears throat> now, nah, the other way to Jim, look at it is your 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 son's learning that if somebody who just, who just called me a coward, you, you, I, you, you just calm down. Yeah. You're calling a co- you're calling a comedy show. Please yeah. try to remember that, <laughs> Jim. It's look, not it, this oh, wait, isn't wait, this isn't this kind of but, show. We're doing the best we yeah, can. I have no problem saying it, Jim. I <laughs> hope he said it, and because I was there, I was a coward too. Like, why are you staying? I just first of all. Uh, I, I want to lose half my shit. That's something. Well, that yeah, is well, that's, that's a very good answer. We've talked about that yeah, on the show a lot. It's not a, it's not a good reason to stay. It's a good question. Okay. I, don't want, I don't want to leave my kid. Number three. What, yeah. what the fuck do I do? The only person who's going to win is people the procrastinate. Video. People don't pay their bills on time. You're going to no. fucking go file for divorce. You know what a pain in the ass no, it is? No, it's a huge pain to in the ass. Lawyer yeah, but here's the thing. Shit, to get it started. The two things. I don't want to lose my kid. I don't want to lose half my shit. Mm. I mean, they're both beatable because, first of all, you you, you have this idea that your kid's going to grow up thinking my dad left us. He, 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 it'll be true if you leave the classic way of just, like, take off dead beat dad. And, and just show up once a week to that, take your kid to an awkward fucking Little League game. They have nothing to say to you. I remember seeing this father with his daughter, and it was so clear that it was like a visitation. Yeah. And they're walking down the street, and he goes, uh, well, we got two hours left. What do you want to do? And she goes, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> so he, really, oh he really gave this thought. Yeah, so it's not that's 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 a shitty father who divorced and then just kind of marginalized their kid. But if you fight for your right to be with your kid and you fight for your custody time, uh, then what your kid will because if you don't do that, the thing you teach your kid is that if a person is abusive to you, you stay with them anyway. It's not a good signal to give a kid yeah. is that if you're in a shit marriage with a bad person or you're a bad person that these guys stay together 
So mm-hmm. that isn't. So I don't buy the. You're not going to. The kids keep aware. Your kid, Jim, the kid. The kids yeah, the aware. Kids that living in a, a house of misery. Oh, right. So you, if you separate, then both you become happier people, and the kid lives in two homes that are happier than one shit home. So that's a plus for the fu- for the kid. And then as far as half your shit, well, fucking be a man and raise twice the money. Just work harder. I mean, really, it's that I liked the fact that I mean, I am I, I'm paying shit to my ex because she didn't have a job when we split up. Uh, but I like I go I'm, I it puts me at zero and then it just motivates me. I work much harder now because uh, I've got and I and anyway, I had to take care of her before. And it actually, if you look at it this way, it reduces your uh, nut with the other person to a check. You have one check that you write. I mean, it's not like that. When you're married, it's not like that. You fight over money. She spends whatever she wants. She's got your bank book. But once you get divorced, you write one check, and it's contained to that. You know what it is. And you call that zero. You just move the zero line in your mind (laughs) to after she's gotten hers. That's exactly how I rationalized it. That's And then you go zero. Now I I, I, I was happy to give away whatever I had so that I could be at a clean... Me zero. Well, then when I, I if I raise ten bucks, I spend eight of it on Snickers bars. Can, can I ask you a question? Shove about the that ninth though? dollar up my no. ass. It's my business. If, if you didn't have the kids, that would be a tough check to write, though. Like in Ant's case, he had to write that check, and he had no connection with her. Like he had, he didn't oh have yeah, that would kids yeah, that he loved that's... during that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. with you, you almost could rationalize it. Like, well, because of my my uh, relationship with her, I got these right. two beautiful daughters. Oh, well, pot, child support and alimony are two little, totally yeah. different no, I, things. I, but it, yeah. it makes it a little easier to write sure. her the check. Is yeah. what, I, I'm just saying, I don't know. Yeah. Or does it? Well, child support is, yeah, I mean, it's just a totally different category. Child support is something that you pay until the kids are yeah, no, I understand yeah, that. 21 years old. But I'm saying the actual check to her is a little easier because you know you had the kids with her. But in Anthony's case, just writing to Oh, a, I did a, not want to write that check. Yeah, no, it's totally no. easier. <laughs> Didn't want to write that check. The, the best check was the last check. That was, yeah, sure. that was when it was all done. And yeah. then I was yeah. like, oh, I got a raise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jim, uh, did we help you out there? You made me feel a little bit better. Actually, Lewis made me feel better because he lost a lot more than, than I could ever lose. So, you know. All right. And I'm sorry I called you a coward, but I, I've, been, I, I, I've been there. I was in a relationship I should have got out of, uh, safe to say, six years before I did. Oh, boy, i got to tell you this. Congratulations on your son. Thank you. And enjoy him as much as you can. And, and, and. It was the and, sappy you know, part. You know, fucking gift, man. Oh. I mean, I love my boy more than anything. He, all he wants to do is play weed, cuddle. And fucking just hang out, and 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 I love them, and I I, I just can't. If you get if you get if you get divorced and you fight for uh, time with your kid, you'll have that t- time with with your kid by yourself, and you'll thank fucking shit Christ for that, <laughs> or whoever you pray to. Good luck with your new show, man. Good luck with your new show. Thanks, uh, buddy. Is, is, yeah, it's gonna be a great one, Jim. All right. Wow, now uh, we've just turned into a relationship show. Look yeah. at these fucking things. That happens. We could take a break and take more phone calls. We could do that. L- Louis, you sticking around or you got to yeah. go? Yeah, I'm here for another 45 minutes or something. Perfect, man. All right, Louis C.K. in studio. His new show, Louis, on FX, next Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. Definitely make sure you, you check it out. All right? All right. The Obi and Anthony Show on the, on the virus. Sirius XM. Louis C.K. in studio. Louis C.K. on Twitter, by the way. He's a good one to follow. And what do we get on LouisCK.net? Anything? Anything good? I never uh, You don't even update anymore. it, right? <laughs> I got to start. I used to love my website. It's just a lot of work. Right now, the, uh, the old thing of, with the Bobby Cannavale thing is still up there. It's still up there. There's, there's uh, tour dates from April. <laughs> I see that. All right. None, none of this is updated. This shouldn't even be on the one sheet, Steve. Yeah, no, I have. I mean, I I'd like to have the website more active. I used to like it. I used to like putting stuff up there. How was the brokerage? Brokerage was awesome. I was on Long Island. I was trying to get away from the, oh, uh, I had such the a baby good time thing. There, I'm, we're just not ready. I'm. I can't separate yet. No, sure. I got to be right in there for a little longer. Yeah, of course. I mean, but I was trying to get away. She was cool with it. She was like, "Go see Louis." She's she was jealous because she loves. Yeah. Him. 
And uh, I don't know, a poopy diaper, a scream, and a no, fucking no, you got to the rest of your done. life to do that. It's not that long that it ends up being. Everyone says about three months, right? Is that yeah, about I, mean, it? I don't know. I think uh, where it gets easier, it starts to a little bit. They stop being a critical, like a critical case. Yeah, the kid starts having a little bit of a rhythm, but they go up and down. You're going to have plenty of. I feel like times. I'm in the emergency room every night. Yeah, it's kind like, of like it's that. like it's it's touch and go every night. When does this end? Look, like like tell me out. No, no, a lot of it is. <laughs> he knows. A lot of it is your perception too. Like I remember when we first uh, had our baby, uh, uh, the doctor said if she cries and she you just can't make her stop crying, call a doctor. Like if she's really totally out of control, can't stop crying. Yeah. So one night the baby was crying and crying. And I said, I think this is it. We got to call the doctor. She just, this has been, you know. So we, I call the doctor to something like the fucking midnight, and the doctor says, "How long has she been crying?" We looked at each other. I'm like, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking but like an hour. But it felt after five minutes like an this eternity. is totally a disaster. Not but gonna it's just, stop. Yeah. It's just perception. Yeah. You just get used to stuff. You, it is, you, I'm you, used to it now. Yeah, it's yeah. more what's going on inside of you than the baby knows exactly what it's doing. The baby's they, a genius. But they don't, they don't teach you shit in the hospital. You're there for no, two days. No, of course not. Teach us some real shit. Like, they don't tell you that the kid will make some really fucked up noises in the middle of the night, which you will be convinced is something horrible. Yeah. And it's just normal. It's like Jay Moore explains in his book. It's like... You're living in a zoo or something. There's a lot of animal noises coming yeah. from the crib. Yeah. They don't tell you that. I thought it was a snore or, or a cry. That's all you're worrying about. Yeah, no. These weird fucked up noises. doesn't breathe right at first because it's still figuring out its lungs. They don't all tell you this stuff. stuff. Yep. Oh, that's pretty creepy. But, <laughs> but now a lot of those noises Jesus. we hear, we're like, oh, okay. That's that's what that is. That's the, yeah. The yeah, the pa- noise it's all parents are learning. That's what they're, it's all... The kid's raising you, really. I mean, the kid knows. The kid develops at its own pace. Yeah. But you have a learning curve. And uh, not as many people.